So now we've created a new page. Let's say I want to create a graph. In this context, the graph could be what is the most popular French film, or what are the films that have the highest ranking, or what French film earned the most money, or what French films earned Academy Awards or Actors Screen Guild Awards, for example. Really, you could make a graph out of any set of facts or information. So let's find a table that we can use. We go to the plus tab as you can see now and then we can choose from a variety of different colors and options as well as there's a, a range of different graphs that we could use, a block graph, a line graph, a pine graph etc. So I think we will actually choose this one. So then I can edit the data so that it fits the information I'm trying to share. In a moment you'll be able to see where we can change the data, but this gives you an idea of what your table could look like. So I can put the information for film one, let's say, how many people liked the film, or what was the most popular film in a particular year. Everything can be changed and manipulated. You can create columns in a group or series, as I said, and you have a calculator that does the work for you. I'm not going to go into this too much, it will take too long, but you can get the idea and there's some great video tutorials out there for you to have a look at and work out how to do this you know, effectively. So this feature really is a good element to be able to add to your pages so that you can make them more interesting. So if we have a look here again at the plus tab. As I mentioned previously, you can also add shapes. If you swipe across, you can see that there are a variety of colors and the colors that show up will depend on the style or theme of the template that you are using in Keynote. Keynote have just recently updated this app, so there's lots of different theme templates now and so there's a lot more options than there was previously. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to do a brief update to demonstrate the changes since the update. Trust Apple to update just as I finish this course. All of the shapes can be used. All of the shapes can be used as a text box as well. There are also connecting lines so that you can do mind mapping and connection of ideas on your pages. So finally, you can add charts and a media tab and we're going to look at one more page to finalize this Keynote application. On this page, I'd like to show you how to add a shape and then give you an idea of what you can do with this in an educational context. So I'm going to select a shape. I'm going to select this one here. Um, actually, no, on second thoughts, I don't want this one. So I can delete this by tapping on the element once and then I can have the option to delete the shape like so. So instead I'm going to choose the shape that has no fill in it. I want to choose the color myself and choose the color that we've been using throughout the entire presentation, that lovely orange color that we've been working with. Now I can make the shape bigger or smaller and you'll see that in a moment. So there's that orange shape right there. And using the pinch and drag technique, I can move the shape around the page. And I've put a border color around it as well. And I want that border to look a little bit bigger. Now I can also glide this across and give it a shadow as well. And here we are making it bigger. And I've also given it a beveled look. I want to add some text inside the shape. So I go back up to my paintbrush and select the T and the text box will appear. Now, as you can see, this is way, way, way too small. So I'll need to highlight the text in a moment and I can change it. But let's just write what we want to write first and then we can go back and change it in a moment like I've demonstrated before. Now you can just select one section or one word 
by holding down your finger on the words and then you can slide your cursor across like so to the spot that you actually want to change. But I do really want to change the whole text in this case. So I'm going to highlight the whole thing, choose my font that we've been using, the Baskerville. So I'm just now going to make it bigger in size. So I have my favourite French film is. So I've actually just realised that I should have done something first before I wrote the text. But as it happens, this is a good opportunity for me to demonstrate what this application can do. So I want to add an image to this page. I've already searched and found the image and this is Amelie which is one of my favourite films. If you haven't seen it before, it's a really magical French film. So now that I've added the picture and it's sitting on top of my shape element and the text, and this is not what I want. I want this picture to be sitting behind both the shape and the text. So I need to go up to a range and I can then use this gliding button again and slide it either to the left or to the right. In this case, I'm sliding it to the left to put it, the picture to the back. And you can see as I slide it back to the right, the picture comes forward again. Now I can also flip the picture horizontally or vertically. I can use a mask tool and I can also lock the picture in position. So I need it to go backwards again. So I'm going to use my slider to do that and then I'm locking the picture in position so it stays there, it can't be moved on the page. Now you can of course go back in and unlock that if you want to. So what I need to do now is animate and this is where we can get really creative and we can let the app do some work for us educationally and I can create some really animated worksheets or presentations. So to get to the animations, as you saw, we went up to the little spanner there and I'm going to choose the transition and builds and the transition I want to choose is the disappear element. So I'm going to make my text disappear and the circle disappear. And as you can see me doing this, you'll get an idea of what I'm trying to do. So within those transition and builds, I can also decide whether I want it to come in or come out and I can also decide whether I want the animation to start with a tap or, or if I want it to work automatically. So if we have a look and see how this looks, there goes the text, there goes the circle, and here is my picture revealed. So as you can see, now that I'm happy with that and I can see that it's working perfectly, you can see that the possibilities are endless for educational use. You can have a question and answer keynote. So as a teacher, I could ask my questions and then reveal the answer with simple animation like I have here. Instead of a picture, you could also add text and this displays the answer to the teacher's question. So simply, I've just typed my favorite film in and then revealed the film Amelie with the picture. As an alternative, I could ask the question, what is the name of the actress who starred in Amelie? and then have a picture of Audrey Tatu, or I could have her name flashing behind the shape. The possibilities are endless. You could also have pictures of the various states and ask what are the capitals of those states. So this makes learning really interesting for the students. And the students could also create their own question and answer sheets as well. So this was a particularly long lecture keynote it's a really extensive app and with the new update it's becoming even more extensive. I don't think teachers realise how powerful this app can be. In a moment I'm going to show you some slides with some additional uses that you could use this app for in the classroom and you will see it's a really vital teaching tool and please don't be limited by my ideas because I'm sure when you think about it you can come up with your own. So let's talk a little bit about Keynote in the classroom and given what we learned by looking at Keynote itself, we know that we can do a lot with the animation. So I want you to think about 
all of these things that I'm going to suggest with the thought that you can animate your keynote presentations and really make them do anything that you want. So the very first obvious thing that students can do is create animated slideshows with text and photos. And I would show my students how to use the animation side of Keynote and show them all the options and not just so that they're randomly picking a dissolve or a you know a door sliding across or it coming in or coming out. I would get them to think about why they're using the animation in what context they're using the animation and how it actually helps them present their learning. So if I go back to the one that I showed you and I wanted the elements to disappear so that the picture behind the shape element and also the text would be revealed. So that's how I would suggest that to my students, that they don't just randomly use animation just because they can that there has to be a purpose to it. So if we think also then about projects and assignments, again, we want our students to present their work in a creative, interesting and purposeful way. We want the keynote presentation to have some design to it. So I would discuss themes and colors and make sure that the text is the same color and the same text all the way through. If you noticed in my presentation, I used Baskerville. And I think it gives your students some thought about how they're going to present their work because I think presentation is really important. Then of course, Keynote to me is perfect for flip teaching. So Keynote is perfect for flip teaching. It is for a number of reasons. The Keynote presentations can be saved as a presentation. You can also save them and they can be then viewed either on a Mac computer or a Microsoft computer as well. So you're not limited by the fact that you're creating it on an iPad. And also the fact that you can then save them as a PDF as well because they then become a document. So there's so many, so many things that you can then use the Keynote for. I mean, the students can present their work back to you using Keynote. They can create their own class activities, quizzes and practice pages. So one of the ideas that I purported in my presentation was that, you know, it would be great for the kids to be able to create their own animated quizzes that they could share with each other. So that way they're learning, creating, and then sharing their ideas with each other. And it's not just let's go home, do some homework, and then come back to school and present our work. They're doing it in a purposeful and meaningful way. And I think that's what makes learning interesting. The students not just become the learners, they become the teachers as well. So you can add shapes and graphs and tables to suit many subject areas. So that means that you, you, you can not only use Keynote in an English and English arts and social studies context, you can also use Keynote for science, for maths, and for any other subject areas that may use shapes, graphs, and tables. The students can use Keynote to keep an ongoing daily diary with photos and text. So it almost become a digital portfolio. So let's go to Keynote in the classroom for teachers. How interesting will your classroom be when you create your students with animated worksheets? So they become interesting and alive and purposeful and fun and they mysterious in a way so that your students never know what they're going to get. They're not going to just get a boring piece of white paper with text telling them what they need to do. They're going to get something that's creative and interesting and they really will feel motivated to read understand and engage with. You can create flashcards for spelling, phonics, grammar, math flashcards, counting flashcards, you know, number sentences, number quizzes. I mean, honestly, the list could go on. You could have your social studies facts. You could do geography facts. I'm sure that your teaching group can brainstorm and come up with a hundred ideas how you can create quizzes and activities. One quick thing that you can do is easily create close activities. You can easily use your animation and have your sentence 
and have your words either disappear or appear or the students could pop them in themselves and create them. So question and answer slides with text and text or text and pictures and I did talk about this in the presentation so I don't really need to go through this in detail. Class storybooks, non-fiction books and math type books. So don't forget that Keynote does and does have to be for the English arts and social studies classroom. It can also be used in all of those other subject areas as well. Even if we think about physical education and art, the students could take photographs of their artworks and have a narrative or annotation about what they were doing, what they were thinking about, what the theme was of, of their artwork, all of those kind of details that are important. And again, it becomes like a digital portfolio. As I said, honestly, you are only limited by your imagination on how you can use this fantastic app in the classroom. And I think it's really important to consider the animated aspect of Keynote, but remember to make sure that it's used purposefully and meaningfully so that you are using it to assist students learning. Let's move on to the next application.